My daughter is a survivor of acute lymphoblastic leukemia and was initially misdiagnosed when she was two and a half year old. She is now an adult, yet despite the fact that leukemia is the most common cancer amongst children, there are many cases where it is still misdiagnosed. Through my daughter's experience, I came to be a part of the International Confederation of Childhood Cancer Parent Organizations and have since met many families who went through the same experience as I did. It was through ICCCPO that I met the daughter of another parent who is also the survivor of AAL and who was also initially misdiagnosed. Today, I will present her story to illustrate how easily this can happen. Jenna grew up as a normal, happy child, reaching all her childhood milestones on cue, and was always very active and healthy, and only visiting the doctor for regular inoculations and checkups. This all started changing at around 19 months, when some days she was less energetic and did not want to play, but her parents put this down to a gross part. At first, they were not concerned, but became worried when, on some days, she did not want to walk or just walked a bit and then sat down. But as she was generally happy, they brushed this aside as Jenna being temperamental. After a couple of days, she started to limp and so they took her to the doctor. This should have been the second red flag. The doctor assured them that it was probably a thorn that she had stepped on and she would soon get better. A week went by and she seemed better and started walking normally again. A short while later, she developed a sore throat with a cough and fever. They took her to the doctor who gave her antibiotics. Another week passed by, but the fever did not go away and she felt unwell, ate only a little and did not want to play. Later, she developed little red spots on her face and arms and had some bruising. This all looked very strange, so they once again took her to the doctor. She also complained of shoulder pain when they lifted her arms to dress her. This time, the family doctor put it down to a reaction from the sunscreen they were applying and told them to stop using that particular brand. He explained that the bruising was probably caused from playing with her older sister and told them they were overly concerned parents. But later, her stomach looked swollen, so they took her to the doctor again. He told them that she was constipated and gave them medicine for this and told them the spot would probably take a while to disappear and that they should stop worrying. After another week, she started limping again and was reluctant to walk at all. Their family doctor was now concerned and thought it may be a bone defect, and so referred them to an orthopedic specialist for further tests. When the specialist saw Jenna, he asked the following questions. When did Jenna start limping? Does she seem more tired than normal? When did the red spot appear and did this go away? For how long have you noticed that her stomach was swollen? When did you first notice a fever? During the examination, he manipulated her hips, causing her to cry, examined her lymph glands, palpated her stomach, and examined the red spots. He immediately arranged for Jenna to see a pediatrician despite it being seven o'clock at night. The pediatrician asked the same questions when he examined Jenna, and then they sent the parents directly to hospital for blood tests. The next morning, she was diagnosed with cancer. Jenna was then admitted to a pediatric oncology ward where they checked her bone marrow and the lumbar puncture was performed to de detect the presence of leukemia cells to confirm the type of cancer and its severity. Jenna fortunately survived but could have been diagnosed much earlier if the doctor had been aware of the early signs of childhood cancer. Here are some key points to remember. Family doctors in their lifetime will see very few cases of childhood cancer, and so it is often confused with other ailments that have similar signs. Watch out for a combination of the symptoms. One on its own could be some other ailment, but a combination of symptoms presenting at the same time is a serious warning. If the symptoms do not clear, 
watch out for additional signs of childhood cancer. If unsure, do not delay, but ask for additional tests to be done or refer to the patient to a specialist. Have easily accessible information in your consulting room so that you can be reminded of the symptoms of childhood cancer. Thank you for allowing me to share Jenna's story, which I hope can help to lessen the chances of misdiagnosis for other families.